Now, before the Hulk's out on the hard work, there was a Kiwi kid that did not try to get beat up, but became one of the cleaning kings in the NBA. The Jason Momoa do double, the one and only Steven Adams from New Zealand. Now, there was a lot of things about this kid you don't know, and I want to highlight it, okay? This Togan Terror, who cleaned up his act, Steven Adams sidestepped the gang life and became a basketball star. Now, here's the story. Now, he was born on July 20th, 1993, southern shores of Lake Runtura. I cannot pronounce this right. Runtura with Polynesian roots, thanks to his token mother. Now, he was, um, let's just say, near guaranteed height, thanks to his six foot 11 English father. But then also, there was like a big thing. Now, he needed some parental guidance because as you saw, he could have gotten some gang culture. Now, this guy had been living with his mother, you know, moved to Tonga, and uh, he had a hectic childhood, crazy childhood. I mean, it was insane. I mean, he learned a lot of things when it came to basketball, discipline, but he's such a sweet, like a sweet guy. I mean, he also had a pet pig, which is kind of interesting, named uh, uh, City Denny, and he used to ride it around town. But a thing about this is that his father was Raleigh. He used to be in the British Royal Navy, all right? And even though, you know, he was a well-traveled man, it was a remarkable fact that Sid fathered 18 children with five different women. This man was a player, man. This man, woo! But out of youngest of all of them was Stephen Adams and made it easy for small targets for him to get picked on. You know, he said, my brothers bullied me a lot, so I cried a lot as a kid. And the only defense I had, we crying would be my dad. And his dad was a cavalry. I mean, dude, his dad was a legend, like straight legend. And then this guy became the dopest dude on the Grizzlies. I mean, there's a story about his dad breaking another man's hand by shaking it. What? Like just a handshake, B. And then certain things were happening. Um, sadly, Sid's dad, uh, Sid Adams, tragedy died of cancer, right? And that really got to him, you know, for, for a 13-year-old, Stephen losing his father, it was one of the most heartbreaking things. You know, he said, when I lost my dad, it was a big hit for me. I didn't have any parental guidance, uh, and I kind of took advantage of it because I was, quote, unquote, a stupid idiot. I decided not to go to school a couple of times and when this, because he didn't felt like it. And then, of course, with that, he got into something called the mongrel mob. It's called the Mighty Mongrel Mob. It's an organized street gang in New Zealand, which they were known for their violence and breaking the law. But thank goodness he got out of that because no one with their violence, you know, he got it after his dad's death. Luckily, basketball fans, you know, basically loved so much. Luckily for basketball fans, you know, as himself never joined officially and just became part of basketball even more, which was beautiful. I mean, you don't want to mess with him at all because this guy doesn't initiate nothing. I mean, the thing is that he talked about trying to be in part of the gang because the initiation was brutal. They pretty much kicked the crap out of you. And he wasn't interested in that. So Steven's older brother knew he was going to intervene, a potential gang member. So he was like, I'm not going to let him fall deeper in that. So what this guy does, Warren Adams had played for the New Zealand basketball team, his older brother. So he figured his 14 little old brother, you know, need a little something. So staying at six foot four, it was a future of a hoops room. And here's the thing, he just kept getting better. I mean, Stephen Adams said, the problem with being a head taller than everyone else is that people must think you're good at sports because you're tall, that's it. And he played a lot of sports as a kid, but he wasn't good. So he put in the work. You know, the thing is that when, when he went around, like he never like went to his private school, never wore a tie before. He was rough around the edges, but this dude was incredible. I mean, look at him dunking on people, making history and birds could fly and he's been flying ever since he's the only the fourth kiwi to ever play in the nba i mean also he's such a great dude i mean he could probably hold his head to be a hero of new zealand which i'm a big fan of him i'm a big fan i'm gonna shout out real quick a story because i don't know if you guys remember that fight between uh it was with john moran right john moran and Tom, uh, uh, Tony Brown, Tony Brown, he came right up to, you know, John, he was holding his jersey, right? Yo, Stephen Adams picked Tony Bradley up like he was a child, like he was a toddler, like just, come here, you ain't doing this. And anytime you watch, like there's a computation on YouTube, find it. Every time there's like an altercation, he's the first person to break it up. Like the first person to break it up. And he becomes like a wall for his team. 
such a gentle giant. I mean, this dude is Aquaman in the flesh on the NBA court. He's actually one of my favorite players to watch. He's also very emotional, and I just love New Zealand and Australia. People don't know this. But shout out to you on it, man, the Aquaman of the NBA, Stephen Adams, representing New Zealand proudly, also Polynesian. Ha! Love it.